Okay, we've got 4.7 transformations of polynomial graphs. Um, transformations of uh, higher degree polynomials are going to work really just like transformations of, um, of quadratic equations, of, of, of parabolas, of second degree equations. Um, okay, so this is function notation here. So I don't have an exponent here because I'm talking about like the function f of x getting transformed like this, okay? So um, if this were a parabola, these uh, numbers would determine the vertex, which means it would shif shift the vertex. Um, the number inside here would shift it left or right, and this would give me the y coordinate that would shift it up or down. The same thing's going to happen with any of these, uh, these higher degree uh, functions, most of them won't have, or actually all of them won't have vertices, but it'll still work with the shifting in the same way. So when we get something like this, it's going to shift everything to the right two, two units. It's a translation, two units to the right, where this is going to shift everything up three. Okay. Um, when we've got a negative either um, in front of the function or uh, multiplying the input of the function, then that's going to be a reflection of some sort, okay? So when we're, um, if you think of f of x as y, if you take the opposite of the y, well, then you're, um, then you're reflecting over the x-axis. If, if you take a point and change the y-coordinate to a different sign, then that's going to reflect over the x-axis. So this is a reflection over the x-axis. And then um, when we're taking the opposite of the input, that's going to reflect over the y-axis. Okay. All right. So then let's look what happens uh, when we have uh, when we have a number that's either multiplied in front of the function, like these two numbers, or um, or multiplied just by the input. Um, and what's going to happen, you're going to have some sort of stretch or, or compression. And that depends on um, the value of the number, it really if the number is more than 1 or less than 1. So I'm just using 2 and 1 half, but this could just have easily been 3's here and 1 thirds. Okay? Um, if, you have, if your number is 1 itself, then it doesn't change, the, it, there's no stretch or compression. But anything greater than um, greater than one or less than one will give you a stretch or compression. Okay. Um, all right. So it depends on the value of the number. Also depends on the placement of the number. If you're multiplying the whole function by the number, or you're just multiplying the input by a number. Okay. And this is the same as uh, what we did in quadratic equations. And I believe that was in chapter two. Um, so I've got a video about that too. All right. So uh, when uh, when the number is outside, there's going to be a, some sort of a vertical change. Okay, so both of these will be a vertical change of some sort. When the number is inside, that means you're going to have a horizontal change. Okay, and then um, the next uh, part is a little tricky to figure out if it's a stretch or compression. Um, so I always think back to parabolas. So if I've got a number more than one, it's going to make my parabola narrower. And if I've got a number less than one, it makes it wider. That doesn't necessarily work with the wider, narrower things with higher degree functions. But you can still figure out if it's a horizontal um, stretch or compression or a vertical stretch or compression. Okay, so if I think about a parabola getting narrower with a vertical change, well, that would mean, so here, let me draw a parabola here. If I've got a parabola, and I want this to get narrower with a vertical change, the vertex is going to stay point put, but those, those two points can only move up or down with a vertical change. And for this to get narrower, they'd have to move up. So that means that this is going to be a vertical stretch. Okay, and if that's a vertical stretch, that means this is going to be a vertical compression because it's going to get wider with a vertical change. Okay, we can go through that the same kind of thinking 
with a horizontal change. If I can only move these two points left or right, that would be a horizontal change. Well, if it's getting, this would be getting narrower, so I'd have to push them in to get a narrower parabola. And so that's going to be a horizontal compression then. Okay, where um, uh, this one is going to be, since it's getting wider with a horizontal change, that would be a horizontal stretch. Okay, all right. So um, let's talk about the factors here, okay? If you've got um, a, a number that's outside, like on these two, the, the factor that you're stretching by or compressing by, oops, I said wider here, but I, um, this should have been vertical um, compression. Okay. Sorry, I was ta saying talking and writing at the same time, and that always makes it a little bit more difficult. All right, so um, when I've got a number on the outside, the factor that I'm using is just the same as the whatever your your a value is, whatever the the value of that um, of the um, coefficient is. But when we're working on the inside, it's actually going to be the um, the uh, it's actually going to be the factor is the reciprocal. So this, the reciprocal of 2 would be 1 half, and the reciprocal of 1 half would be 2. A little confusing, but that's how it works. Okay. All right. So um, we'll get to some of these uh, transformations in just a minute, but we need some parent graphs first. We've never graphed... Um, a, a uh, y equals x to the third in, uh, in here. So let's go ahead and do that. And we can make an x, y table to start. Let's just do that since we haven't looked at these before. Well, when I plug in 0 for x, um, okay, so let's find f of 0. 0 to the third is 0. So the point 0, 0 is on my graph, okay? When we plug in a 1, let's see what happens. 1 to the third equals 1. Okay, let's plug in a 2. So if we're finding f of 2, we've got 2 to the third, which is 8. So the point 2, 8 is going to be on the graph. I've got 1, 1, and then 2, 8. Kind of looks like uh, maybe the right side of a parabola a little bit, but it's actually not quite the same shape. But let's see what happens when we look at some negative values. Okay, so if I'm looking for f of negative 1, I'm taking the quantity negative 1 raised to the third power. That's negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. So a negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. And take the opposite of that. That's going to come out to negative 1. Okay. And let's try the same thing with negative 2. Okay. So yeah, you, know, you can think of this as negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Right. So that means I've got 4 times negative 2, which is negative 8. Okay, so I've got a negative 1, negative 1, and negative 2, negative 8. Okay, and what we're going to get um, with this function is uh, something that looks kind of like an S-curve. Okay, going to go something like that. All right. So this doesn't have a vertex, but it has a center. Okay, so the center for our parent graph here is the origin. Um, and that's where the, the curve is going to turn around. It's kind of curving down or curving that way. And then that's where the S um, changes direction of its curve, right, is the center. Okay. All right. So with this parent graph in mind, let's try to do some transformations okay we're going to describe the transformations here so I can see I've got okay this is a cubic function so I'm going to have some sort of an s curve um, what I like to do is first find the center when I'm graphing this and that's going to come from here so I take the contents of this set it equal to zero that's going to give me the x coordinate of my center if that's the x coordinate whatever's out here is going to be the y coordinate really the same as finding the uh, vertex of, uh, of a parabola, okay? Uh, I guess I should leave, I'll leave my parent graph up there, okay? All right, so um, let's put that in the graph here. I've got one, negative four, 
Okay, and if I'm describing transformations, uh, that center shifted one right down four, right? So it's a translation, one right down four. I'm not going to write out the word translation, but that's the translation part, okay? I've got some other things happening here, though. I've got um, this negative out here, which is going to give me a reflection, okay? So if you go back to the beginning of the notes, we've got that negative that's it's outside the parentheses there, right? So it's going to be a reflection over the x-axis then, okay? Um, it's going to be this type. So this is a reflection over the x-axis. Okay, so let's think about what that would mean. If my parent graph it looks something like this, if we're reflecting over the x-axis, well, here's the x-axis and the y-axis. There's my x-axis, okay? If I reflect over the x-axis, well, that's going to, um, any point up here would be get moved down there. And what's going to end up happening, it's going to look like that. It's going to look like the, the pencil one there, okay? So my curve is not going to go uphill from left to right. It's going to go downhill from left to right. Okay. All right. And then we still have the two to deal with. And that's, in my opinion, this is the trickiest part. Okay. So I like to think back to, um, to a parabola. If I, I mean, if you have this, this chart that, that we made out in front of you, that's going to be very helpful. Okay. This one is going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of two. But if you needed to figure that out, I think of an original parabola. If it was a parabola, it would be narrower. And then I've got a vertical change because it's not inside touching the x. So to get narrower with a vertical change, well, those two points would have to move up. If they can only move up or down, they'd have to move up to make this narrower. And that's how I can figure out that this is a vertical stretch. I usually don't ask my students to identify what the factor is, but the factor would be 2 there. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do now, I, I like to plot what I call the ghost points. Okay. So I'm thinking about the parent graph. If this is my center, my parent graph, the next two points, I go up one to the right one, uh, down one to the left one. So here and here. But wait a second. I've got this reflection. So I'm going to put the uh, ghost points here and here. I'm not going to bother with the next set because they're going to be way off of my uh, given chart there, right? So I'll only use the center and the next two points typically. If I can fit more, I might fit more in, okay? But that would give me um, sort of a downhill curve, okay? But I still want to do, so the ghost points are without the vertical stretch. Now I want to do the vertical stretch, okay? So the center is going to stay put. That's the anchor point. But these other two points are going to move vertically away. They're going to stretch vertically away from the center. Okay, so this point is going to go up and this point is going to go down. Okay, now I have to figure out how far they go. Well, that's where um, the factor comes in. Since this is a 2, I want this vertical distance to be doubled, the vertical distance from the center of the graph. So right now those two points are one unit above and below the center. I want to double that and have them be two units below and above the center like so, right? Not two more units, but now these, these pink points are two units from the center as opposed to one unit from the center, okay? And then I can draw in my graph. And, you know, it takes a little, little getting used to drawing. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to draw in those S curves, but the more of them you do, the, the more used to it you'll get. It should look something like that, okay? All right. It's going to be that same kind of process, whether it's fourth degree, fifth degree, sixth degree. It's just we have different parent graphs to deal with, okay? Um, so here's our parent graph for uh, y equals x to the third, which we already covered there, right? And this is hard to see on here, but this is the point one, one, and this would be negative one, negative one, okay? Um, so what it looks like for um, y equals x to the fourth it looks kind of like a parabola. We've got 0, 0 there. This would still be the point 1, 1, and this is going to be the point negative 1, 1, okay? Um, and in a previous lesson, I, I, I was describing fourth degree functions often are going to look something like this. You get more hills and valleys as you go. It's just that sometimes it looks kind of flattened out if you zoomed in on this, and you can't always see the hills and valleys. So that's... it's. 
it's not a perfect system. On these parent graphs, you, you won't always see it, okay? And then a fifth degree I described might look something um, like this. Kind of adding more hills and valleys as you go, okay? Six degree might look something like this. Okay? But you see that these still have the end behavior as these provided graphs. Okay? And by the way, this is the point one, one, and negative one, negative one. Here's one, one, and negative one, one. I didn't mark zero, zeros on all the center on all of them, but uh, that's just the origin there. Okay? Um, so, yeah, they might look something like this. And in order to find all those hills and valleys when we're graphing, we need to be able to find um, the, uh, we need to be able to find these, these are called um, minimas and maxima. Maxima, they're, they're like the local, uh, they're not called vertices, but they're kind of like the local vertex, the vertex in their little area, okay? But that's uh, for another day. All right, so with these uh, parent graphs in mind, let's take a look at another, um, another example so hey this is fifth degree and okay i've got something that looks like this oh also sorry i wanted to talk about the end behavior you notice it's alternating right the end behavior as you go up in degrees so you know that's going to have arms in the opposite directions and then i've got the two arms facing up arms in the opposite direction two arms facing up and that pattern's going to repeat itself um, as you get into higher degree ones okay so this is a fifth degree equation, so it looks a lot like my uh, third degree equation uh, for the parent graph, um, but I'm just going to work with that, okay? So uh, let's see. The uh, one half, well, um, this is outside. Um, it's not touching the x, so that means we're going to have a, uh, a vertical change. Okay, and thinking back to parabolas, that'd be a wider parabola with a vertical change. So I'm thinking, okay, I can only move those points up or down. If I want this to get wider, I'd have to move them down, right? So that's going to be then a vertical compression. Okay? All right. Let's find um, the center, not the vertex, but the center. I'm going to take this, set it equal to zero. So that negative need to, needs to come with that. It's not as simple as just changing the sign of the 1, right? I want to solve this for x. Okay, so x is going to equal 1. And then y is negative 2. So that's going to be my center, 1, negative 2. Oh, I'm off screen there. Okay, and that also is going to tell me, okay, I've shifted everything right 1, down 2. Okay, so there's some transformations that I've described. Here's one. Uh, my factor would be one half there if you asked for the factor. Okay. Um, and then this negative is also going to be a reflection. And when it's uh, when the negative's inside the parentheses, in, still in front of the x, but inside the parentheses, that's going to be a reflection over the y-axis. Okay, so let's think for a second about reflecting over the y-axis. If here's my basic shape, it's going to look something like that. If I'm reflecting, reflecting over the y-axis, well, it's still going to make this happen, something like that, right? Because this point would be over there now, over the y-axis. Okay, so it's still going to be kind of a downhill curve going from left to right. All right, so I've got this point. Let's put in our ghost points. So if there were no stretch or compression, my next set of points would be here and here. Okay, But I do have a vertical compression. So that means these points are going to move in towards the, um, towards vertically in towards the center. So they're moving um, up and down to get closer to the center. And since it's one half, they're going to be half the vertical distance from the center. So it's going to end up there and there, okay? That center just stays put. That's my anchor point, okay? And then I'm ready to draw in my curve. So it's gonna look something like this, okay? 
it's not a perfect graph. You could always find more XY pairs by plugging in some different Xs. Um, and you get the Ys that come out with them if you want um, to get an even more accurate graph. But it's a good start there. Okay. All right. That's the end of the section. And I'll see you next time.